DSO here. Welcome back to another episode of the Dad Starting Over podcast. And with me today is none other than Hank. <laughs> What's <laughs> going on, guys? We're laughing because it's a fake name, but um, we were trying to decide what fake name to go with. And he's like, can I be Hank? And I just had to laugh. Like, of all the names, like, all right, Hank, it is. I've always wanted to be Hank. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Hank here is a uh, reader of the Dead Bedroom Fix, as well as a member of the DSO fraternity. And uh, he and I got to chatting, and he's in a situation which um, I think a lot of you out there can relate to. He's going through a divorce, but we're kind of uh, jumping ahead in the story. I thought it would just be good to talk to an everyday Joe and uh, get some perspective on what he's going through, what he will go through give some advice, you know, all that fun stuff. So where to begin with this? How did, um, how did you and your wife meet? <laughs> Funny story, man. Uh, Tinder, actually the app Tinder. <laughs> sure. How long ago was yeah. that? Uh, it's been about a little, little over five years ago. So, uh, I actually was a platinum, uh, member. No too. shit. You weren't messing around. Yeah. I wasn't messing around, man. I was dicking them down. So I, mean, I really was. <laughs> I was dicking them down. <laughs> and I just happened to scroll on my wife, and she was sitting behind a beer pong float. Well, with say no a more. Ameri- yeah, with a American flag bikini on with her big fake tits. And I was like, I'm going to marry her. Wow. <laughs> did did you really did you really have that right off the bat? Like, that's my kind of woman? Yeah, I, it was the, the physical attraction. The physical attraction just threw me for a leap, man. I don't know. Nothing screamed America like that picture did, you know? (laughs) So um, what was your relationship experience prior to her? Uh, Well, honestly, uh, I've got a previous kid with another woman that did not work out very well. I got out of high school and uh, messed around for a little while. And then me and this girl was friends. And for a long time, we decided to get in a relationship, got pregnant. She introduced me to Facebook and, uh, uh, cheated, cheated with her, you know, our owner, uh, oh, okay. a lot of people. Yeah. So, so, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so you were in, was this in high school when you met this first chick? Yeah. Chick yeah, number one, we'll call her chick number chick, one. So chick yeah, number one, chick you met number. her in high school. You guys became an item. And you knocked her up. I assume that was a big oops. Yeah, I actually actually was planning on leaving her the day I found out she was pregnant. And then she told me she was pregnant. And you know, so. I don't know what it is, but I've heard that more than a few times. It's almost mm-hmm. like the universe knows like, <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy, you got uh, that's what you think. Here you go. Um, right. Yeah. But in all honesty, I will say uh, she was actually a really good woman. I was just really immature. And Well, and that's dumb. big of you to say. And so yeah. obviously being a high school kid, uh, you weren't ready for that. And, I, uh, I thought I was. And looking back at it with the hindsight being what it is, was you cheating on her, was that kind of your way of uh, coping? That was your medicine? Like I, No, I, honestly, to, to be honest with you, I kind of had uh, high school – I mean, which I, I've always considered myself a good looking dude, but I didn't have that much confidence, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, I guess just, just the way I was raised, but, uh, that really is what it, it was just a ego boost. Uh, made me, <laughs> made me feel good about myself, you know, well, to be able that, to uh, sleep well, with A, B and C. Well, sure. So in a way that was a coping, which means you're just sitting there at home going, I got a kid, a kid and a woman and responsibilities and what the hell am I going to do with my life? Shit. Some people turn to liquor or booze. Some people just, I'm going to go gamble all my money away and, you know, who, drugs. Your vice was, let me go get some attention from other women. Yeah, let's get some of that vagina. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> so that ended because she found out about it, I assume. Not yeah. Like, you didn't yeah. confess. You, she's like, what? what's this th- number on your phone or whatever? Or, uh, I was actually uh, hit on her best friend. <laughs> okay, no, hold on. <laughs> were oh, you man. were you inebriated at the time, or was this? Uh, you, no, no, I just was so confident. <laughs> and her friend went yeah. to your, your ex and said, "You know what, uh, Hank there just did. He just <laughs> came on to me and whatever." And that, yeah, and then yeah. so then she said, "You know what? I think we're done here." Or did, yeah. was that to open up the Pandora's box to find out other stuff about you? 
Well, uh, <laughs> we kind of tried to work things out, and she wanted me to come clean about everything I did, and so I did uh, foolishly. Gotcha. <laughs> and that was the end. All right. So she's out of the picture. Well, not completely ever really. Right. That's the mom to your kiddo. Yeah. We actually get along really get along good right. now. Well, she's out of yeah, the, like I can, I confide thing. in her a lot. <clears throat> I've actually confided in her a lot in my marriage because, uh, she actually seen me at my absolute worst, you know? Yeah. And so, so I, I reach out to her a lot for advice. She's a good person. Well, good, good. Okay. And so how long after that ended that you met uh wife? She was probably about uh, three or four years, maybe. It was okay. actually a while. Like I took the whole single thing to the max. You know, I said I was a platinum member to tender, you know? Yeah. Uh, I just. And you had luck. You had luck for, with the online dating thing. I Man, it was. It, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Fish in a barrel Absolutely. for you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, man, it'd be two in one night, sometimes three in a day. Wow. Like, it was bad. I mean, wow. it was, it was bad. I went, well, wild. I mean, psychologists would put you on the couch and say, uh, two, three women in a day, huh? What, uh, what are you trying to a cover? I don't know, deal with, cover up, cope with. Cause that sounds like it's kind of compulsive in nature. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I I guess it was just, uh, was the chase. I was addicted to the chase, the the mm-hmm. feeling of knowing that I could have them and, and, and get them. You well, know? I mean, any man who's had any bit of success with women will, um, you know, nod their head to this and go, yeah, as far as drugs go, there's really not one nearly as strong as, uh, looking at some woman across the room or on the internet as it were and saying, she's cute and let me get to know her and boom, next thing you know, you're in bed with her. Holy shit. It's just, we're engineered for that. Yeah, That's what absolutely. keeps the old species going. <laughs> and so, yeah, no, um, absolutely. but, uh, as you know, we can go too far. And then next thing you know, you're 200 women in and you're like, um, there's gotta be more life than this. Cause I'm still not happy. And that's honestly, uh, about the point. I was at when I met my wife. But then um, we're kind of jumping ahead in the story, but as a lot of former playboy, player, whatever you want to call them, ladies, man types, it seems like you're, you belong to a small subset of guys that I talk to, but they're all very similar in that it's at some point in my life I said, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm ready to, quote, settle down, start a family, get a good girl, et cetera, et cetera. And then once they get it, not much time into it, they're like, <clears throat> well, this just ain't cutting it. Um, I kind of need more oomph here. I need a little bit more spice. I need a little bit more something, more sexy, more whatever. And they sometimes approach the wife with that and say, let's let's get crazy. Let's do fill in the blank. And she's like, ew, no. I'm like, man. Um, so, again, jumping ahead in the story there. Uh, you... Meet Miss America on uh, Tinder. And how long was your little courtship before you guys got hitched? I, to be completely honest with you, and looking back on it, man, it was completely insane. Completely insane. Uh, we actually decided to have a kid before we got married within uh, six, seven months of. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <I'm>, it's, yeah. <laughs> you, you both agreed to have a kid. Uh, usually, now correct me if I'm wrong. That usually means the woman's little has some baby fever and she campaigned and she convinced you that let's have a kid. I don't know. We we just got on the subject of it one night, you know, and I don't know. I say it was within six months in, and you know, I, you know, learned that you go through this, the new phase, you know, where the news in and you're just, I love you this. I love you that yada. Everything's perfect. Nothing in the world could, you know, bring you down from the point you're at. And that's kind of the point we were both in. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. (laughs) I said, looking back at it was foolish. Now don't get me wrong. I do, do not regret my son whatsoever. But looking back on, I say it was just something we both agreed on. It wasn't even really baby fever. It was just, Hey, you know, and she she knew she knew of your previous relationship and your kid with the other mm-hmm. gal, and she, you'd only known you for about six months. And she's like, you know what? Let's have us a kiddo. And you're like, damn straight, let's have us a kiddo. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but I I did ask her parents 
for permission to marry her literally literally the day before we found out she actually was pregnant so i mean wow. the, the intentions were there wow okay <laughs> and so was that around that six seven month time frame of we yeah. just we just met seven months before hey let's right. have a kiddo and then hey let's get married he went to the parents let's do this and then so boy you didn't waste any time you know I, ideally it's a pretty long courtship process you get to know me i get to know you warts and all let's see each other when the shit hits a fan all right we can work this out boom engaged married let's be a married couple for a little bit now we're ready let's have some kiddos but man you kind of skipped <laughs> that old I skipped a lot man, i was stuff. just i was just in the point in my life where i was just you know ready to settle down <laughs> let me uh, and, let me stop you there and get into some kind of heavy stuff which is i'm ready to settle down usually points to or i'm ready to settle down there's nothing wrong with that i'm ready to settle down after knowing a gal for six months and having a kiddo right away any therapist or anybody worth their salt will say um so tell me about mom and dad oh shit mom and dad man they were they were split up I think I was one, two. Yeah. You know? uh, so I bounced back and forth between them growing up. You know, uh, I'd get in trouble uh, with my mom <laughs> or at the school, in the school system that I was at. And, you know, so I'd go to my dad's and then I'd do the same thing there. So I just bounced back and forth. They hated each other. Hmm. Uh, never talked. Uh, yeah. My mom actually took my dad to court. You know, making some false claims against him Oof. when he was, uh, yeah, and it was it was a pretty rough uh, situation. Do you have some uh, siblings? Uh, yeah, I have a sister. She's a couple years younger than me. How'd she fare after all this? Yeah, she's doing all right. Wor uh, worse off than I am, oh, I guess okay. you'd say. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's got my sister. She's got learning disabilities, things like that. So she's kind of you know uh, struggle. Struggle. She struggles. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So. There you had a front row seat as a little kid to some pretty toxic marital stuff, which uh, whether it's consciously or unconsciously has kind of been printed in you. Here's how relationships go. This this is what you do. And you kind of fight that as an adult. Like, yeah, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to end up being divorced. I'm never going to be in a toxic relationship. And then you do what 99% of the guys do. You end up going, well, shit. Yeah, I just took my eyes off the road for one second. I've already crashed into a tree. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, I think I, I fare more towards my mom's side. Uh, my mom, she's been married. She was married a few times after my dad. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually remember one time. Uh, I was probably ten or eleven, maybe a little bit younger. But uh, she actually took me with her to cheat on her husband. <laughs> I got to play with his kids while they bump, bumped uglies in the next room. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, Hank, you laugh at that, but that's some pretty fucked up shit right there. Um, I mean, no, it is. I mean, it is like looking uh, back on it as an adult. I'm just like, wow. no, no offense to mom, but that's pretty effed up. And oh, yeah. that's, no, that's going to leave. I don't care how tough you are. That's going to leave an imprint on you. And that's going to have an effect on you moving forward in life and forming relationships with women and, you got to, again, I use that term. You got a front row seat for this is what adults do. This is the whole relationship game. Um, so fast forward back to current wife. When did the wheels start falling off of this relationship? Uh, really, uh, around the time she got pregnant, uh, the hormones, uh, you know, out of balance, out of whack, uh, I put, I, I endured a lot, you know, I wasn't the type of person that, you know, judged her for the way that she was. I dealt with it. Uh, and then when she had, you know, our son, she got postpartum depression. She had it for about a little over a year. Oh, wow. Uh, and I didn't realize it. I did not know it at the time. Uh, she's actually bipolar and I did oh, not shoot. realize it. I did not realize it until she got pregnant and wasn't allowed to take her medication. I didn't even know uh, that she was really on medication. So she not okay. I thought you were gonna say later on she got diagnosed. No, she knew and kept it from you. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Wow. Well, that's one of those um exhibit A for why you kind of you know get to know somebody <laughs> a little longer out. than six, yeah. seven months. Yeah, because yeah. you find out these kind of things like bipolar. That's nothing to sneeze at. 
And yeah. so when yeah. she went off the meds, the postpartum, I assume, are you kind of saying that that's kind of one of the lows of the bipolarness? Because, I mean, let's stop. For those that don't know, bipolar is, is um, the symptoms of it are you have pretty extreme highs, manic. She had, she had, no, she wasn't manic. She had the lows. She just she had really bad low, lows, just really real, bad lows. Real bad dips where she would just stay in yeah. bed all day kind of thing for days at a yeah. time, weeks at a time. Yes, sir. Yeah. Didn't want to do nothing. You know, I had to come home from work a few times to help with the kid because she was so stressed out. Was she ever um, hospitalized for any of this? No, no, she wasn't. And, and she actually was uh, comp- contemplating, you know, suicide at, you know, one point in time. Uh, well, wow. she said she'd never do it, but she was thinking about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it got it got pretty low, you know, and I endured as much as I could. Uh, and it just, you know, it just never really got better. You know, she once, you know, she quit breastfeeding. Uh, she got put back on her medication. It took a while to kind of get it straightened back out. And then she said she felt fine, but you know, our relationship was still <laughs> as it was, you know, before or after the, or before the postpartum ended. So <clears throat> and, uh, to simplify, there was a lot of damage done during that pregnancy period where she had some really bad lows. Yes, um, absolutely. But, hindsight being what it is, do you look back and say, um, uh, I could have done more to kind of be the leader and the champion of, all right, let's get you back on the horse or did, were, was her, were her lows in that period so bad that that really dinged your respect for her? Well, let's, let's say your love for her, your attractiveness to her. Was it, you, know, you walk me through, was it too little too late by the time she had come out of that and was feeling better? No, no, man. I said, I endured. I, I really did. Like I, <laughs> I actually really found the type of person I was uh, with her. You know, uh, okay. I, I endured so much, and I s- tried to stay positive. Uh, tried to help her. Tried to push her. You know, with with the lows also come. You know, with the pregnancy, the the weight gain, and the, the not feeling good about themselves, and you know, so trying to push her to, or well, not really push, but encourage her to, you know to go to the gym with me or, or, you know, go on walks, things like that. It just, I endured a lot. Uh, I, I felt like I'd done what I could, you know, the, the best I could. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in a, in a sense, I mean, looking back on it now, even, you know, after uh, a year or so after she supposedly was, you know, cured of the postpartum, I still felt like, you know, uh, it, it only because the re- relationship didn't change, you know, it was, she was still having lows. She was still depressed, but she still, I mean, she said she felt fine. Uh, sex pretty much was, uh, bland, <laughs> bland, bland. Um, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. and so, man, I, I guess that, uh, I guess I did kind of lose a little bit of respect and, and love after the fact you know, of putting up with it for so long and it just not seeming to get better. Uh, I I tried, (laughs) you know. Mm -hmm. So you gave it a shot. You're trying, you're trying to be Mr. Cheerleader and leader to, to getting better. Try this, try that. And her reaction was basically, I I don't have it in me. I can't, I'm done here. I'm my, this is, this is my new, persona i'm miss depressed gal yeah Yeah. and and that and that's the way it's been man for for years you know uh our son is four you know so i endured that for you know four years you know we Mm. are going to file for you know an uncontested divorce next month Uh, i've done moved out and and it's just it's been it was rough it was rough you know uh no change so walk me through the um decision-making process with that was it uh you guys had a big blowout and you eventually said you know what i think this is it I'm, i've had honestly enough. honestly i just got to the point to where i didn't want to be around her i didn't want to talk to her i didn't want to look at her and that's really where it it, it boiled down to you know i would leave and say I was going somewhere to do something and in, in all actuality, I was just going somewhere to be alone to drink and listen to music just to have some, some me time, you know, yeah. uh, which I mean, like I said, and, and if you was to ask her, she'd say, well, he doesn't communicate, you know, he doesn't spend time with me, 
And I just got to the point where I didn't want to do those things anymore, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And, and do you feel in a roundabout way her actions kind of pushed you away over no, the years? No, absolutely. Push, absolutely. push, push. You'd try absolutely. and she'd push. You'd try and she'd push. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, we were having issues in the bedroom, which is when I, you know, I found the, the dead bedroom fix. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I read the book and I started applying the principles and, and it, you know, instead of getting it, you know, and it, it wasn't that I didn't get it. I just didn't get it the way I wanted it. Uh, <laughs> but instead of getting it, you know, two times a week, I may have got it three times a week, but it was still just the same bland like ass mechanical. lay there, yeah. take it, just take it top, you know, sex, you know, I mean, literally <laughs> I actually told her that, you know, I could, honestly get the same exact sex that you offer from a blow up doll and yeah. would feel better about it. In fact, that's uh, in some of my writings and podcast stuff. I, uh, I actually, one of the fraternity podcasts, I put your wife is not a sex doll um, because what you've experienced, some men do that for years and years and years. And uh, I tell them, I go, what are you telling your wife? Just lay there and kind of be my masturbation device. And, and I really don't give a shit whether you like, don't like, feel, don't feel it. This is for me to get off and thanks. See you next week at this time. And uh, so, so for a lot of men, it finally clicks and they go, not only is this not sexy, now I feel like a complete and total shit bag for doing this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it is, man. That's all what it, you know, I miss the, the, the passion, you know, the, uh, the just, attractiveness you know and yeah. that shit you know that ship sailed a long fucking time ago yeah uh you know i tried to you know try to spice things up offer solutions she'd always shoot it down or no i'm not into that no you know i i was just like hey why don't we go and get you something that will help you you know mm-hmm. and i started giving her all these ideas and sending her pictures and she's like i don't care about that stuff you know like no so i just so here's and the- in, in my mind that's that's what broke the camel's back because you know i'm a i'm a sexual person i'm a man <laughs> and when it when it boiled down to it i you know i had to ask myself can i have this bland ass sex for the rest of my life and the answer is no mm-hmm. you know no you know like i will never be truly happy <laughs> fucking a sex doll that talks you know um but i think you're kind of on the surface there you're, the reason the Dead Bedroom Fix book, as I've said many times, was successful is because it addresses the biggest pain point for guys like you is the sex thing. But then right. all you got to do is peel the layers of the onion back a little bit, and it, it ain't just the sex. It's the fact that your wife's depressed, and she doesn't put forth any effort to fix the problem. Yeah, I mean, that's what it, that's, I mean, that's really honestly what it boiled down to, is just the, the connection wasn't there, you know? Uh, would it, I don't care. Would it surprise you going forward in life, you guys get the divorce, and she very quickly jumps with another man, another relationship. Would that be a, no. oh, wow, I didn't see that coming or you'd be totally shocked. Well, if she, no, if she did, I mean, if she did, yeah, I'd be like, oh shit. Wow. You know? Yeah. Uh, Don't be surprised. Because, oh, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I mean, if she does, I mean, that's fine. You know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm over. <laughs> the, re- the reason being, um, she quickly jumped on board, got pregnant with and married a bad boy. You. And, uh, you're probably not the first bad boy she was ever attracted to and you won't be the last. And Uh, what a lot of women that are kind of wired like that, chasing that high of the unavailable ladies, man, bad boy type is that once they get into that comfortable, I got a kid, I got a house job, blah, blah, blah. They're just, they just shut down. They're like, that's it. I, it's, there's, ugh, it's gone. The spark's gone. Everything, not just attraction to my partner, just the lights out. I don't, I can't turn this light back on. And then when it's for some circumstance, such as divorce or some other life circumstances, here you go, sweetheart, you're back out in the world. It kind of surprises everybody. Like, wow, she became Miss Party Gal again. Where the hell did that come from? And um, so don't be surprised if you're like, you already got another man. And you're already moving in with them. Jeez, that was fast. Um, hey, if it, a if lot of men happens, in your situation see that and get like crushed, heartbroken. Not because oh my gosh, I I miss my woman, but because she couldn't must, thing. she couldn't muster that energy for me over the last so many years. 
And as soon as I say divorce, bloop, she flips the switch and she's off to the next one. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it happens, it happens. You know, it is yeah. what it is. I and wish let's, her let's not just pick up. Luck. Let's not just pick on her, though, because I'm talking to you. And you're going to do this shit again, too, if you don't watch it. I already have. Oh, geez. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. Do tell. Yeah. I mean, I, I already have. I said we were uh, contemplating a divorce, and I just stayed gone for a few weeks. There's a girl that I was talking to that was actually kind of going through the same thing as uh, me with uh, her, which they weren't married, but they were just together. And for, you know, a really long time. So we kind of connected there, you know, on a, on a, you know, a mental level, emotional level, just cause we both kind of, you know, just mm-hmm. bent into each other, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, next thing uh, we met up and, you know, fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and man, I, I tell you, uh, the, the best thing about that man is, is for the past four years, uh, I hadn't really felt like a man, you know, hmm. and that night, I uh, shit, I was on top of the fucking world, man. Sure. I mean, honestly, I mean, I was honestly, I was on, I was on testosterone, uh, been on testosterone for a while and I hadn't took it in a while. And man, I, I, I feel great. I, th- I mean, I, I feel great and I don't even take it anymore. Oh, you I, know? I mm-hmm. mean, <laughs> I mean, I honestly think that, that a big part of, you know, the relationship with my wife, uh, with my low testosterone was I was just so mentally drained, exhausted and just sleeping with another woman, you know, that actually, you know, says, yeah, we can do that. Or, mm. you know, makes a couple noises here and there. I'm just, <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't know. It just doesn't take it was, much. It, was does fan- it? it don't take much, man. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. Well, I mean, you're a dude and you got needs, right? Absolutely. And this woman said, yeah, me too. And you two met and did your thing. Here's where it gets dangerous though. You have a track record of jumping into these things pretty quickly and pretty heavy, pretty fast. Right. Have you conveyed to this woman, Hey, it's just, I'm not even divorced yet. Let's just, oh, yeah. let's just, yeah. cool, let's just cool our jets. Um, yeah. Like we, we, I mean, obviously like I said, we, we did kind of connect on a, on an emotional level just because, sure. you know, what mm-hmm. was going on, but, and, and, you know, we still to this day, you know, meet up and hang out and, but we both agreed that uh, if anything was to ever happen between us on a, a, a different level, it would be at least a year, you know, before anything like that was even to happen. When I, I totally agree with it, man, I, I totally agree with it. Uh, I'm going to work I'm on gonna check in again with you in about three months to see uh, <laughs> what the story is. Cause I'm not, I'm not buying it. You're going to, you're going to be you're having gonna, another baby. Huh? You're going to move in with this chick in about a month. <laughs> you're going to no. just be, no, just be man. careful. I, just be careful. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. And you know, like just, you know, reading in your book and listening to some of your podcasts, you know, a lot of men do that. You know, they, mm-hmm. the first one they sleep with, they, you know, they jump right into another one, you know, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't believe in that. Uh, I mean, one, like I said, I've, I've really only been in <laughs> two serious relations. I, I guess if you want to call the first one serious, I'll call it serious because we had a kid and I still, you know, I'll pay child support and, you know, got to see her, you know, just about every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, uh, I'm not jumping the gun. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't do that unless I've got kids and I've got to work on me, mm-hmm. uh, be the best version of myself. Cause I mean, even though that there's a, a, a lot of love lost, you know, for my wife, it still hurts to an extent. Sure. Uh, I mean, just for the simple fact that, you know, I did put in effort. I did try, um, you know, I was the supporter, you know, uh, uh, all that, you know, good stuff mm-hmm. on top of, of, of trying to be the, the same bad boy with her that just didn't <laughs> just, just didn't work. Uh, so, you know, I've got to, I've got to slow down on this one. Uh, not jump into anything. I agree with you there. I said, you know, listen to your podcast and stuff. I'm not the top person. That's just um, there, there is a, you, you do have a, a vibe about you, which a lot of your, a lot of guys period do, but a lot of your more experienced ladies, men, player types have, which is sex is sex and it's fun and it's this and this. And I, I don't care how tough of an alpha male you are. Sex is complicated. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Sex is emotional. 
And, it is. And, you know, everybody has that tipping point where you go from, well, this is fun to, I can kind of see myself with this person. I can kind of yeah. see this. That's where your ass gets in trouble. And wow. that's where you find yourself a year down the line going, God damn it. Why didn't I just wait? <laughs> I could have waited a whole, you know, which is why I give advice to men in your situation, which is just give women a break for a little bit. They ain't going anywhere. It's not like you have some biological clock ticking that's like, if I better, you know, make some more babies before I get too old. You've made your babies, right? Right. Um, you're going to run into some women that are going to be like, after you fall in love with them, after you're gaga, even though you're saying like, hey, like you know, I'm going to go bang 50 women, one or two of them are going to make you go, hmm, I want her to be like to be her husband or her live-in boyfriend or whatever. And then she's going to drop the bomb of let's have some babies. And you're like, oh, geez, here we go. I'm actually get scheduled an appointment with a doctor next week. The old vasectomy? Get snipped. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> three baby mamas. That's just that's just crazy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I got two of them. That's enough. <laughs> no, man, I, I did now do too. So um Yeah. So there's a little bit of concern. Um, you know, you have I was gonna say the ink's not even dry on your divorce yet. Wow, I sounded very Southern just then. Dry. The ink's not dry on your divorce yet. Uh, You don't even have ink, do you? You don't have anything yet. This is just all verbalized, hey, we're getting a divorce. Yeah. Um, And you're already shacking up, shacking up, you know what I mean, with another gal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I guess in my mind, man, when, you know, divorce come into my mind, yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. You know, I was, I'm going back to the old me, you know, like yep. I'm fisting to just sling it to, you know, just about whoever wants it. Well, I've got standards though. It's just, I get just it. anybody. I get <laughs> it. Another part but, of this equation though, is you can look at it, not from your own perspective of, I need to take time to heal from this. Cause no matter how tough I tell myself, this is still a traumatic thing. For example, before we started recording this, you told me you'd lost how many, how much weight? About 20 pounds. In a matter of how long? About a month. 20 pounds in a month. That's your body saying you're going through some shit. Oh, yeah. No, That's absolutely. some anxiety like said, and man, stress does, and trauma of the situation. Hurt. Yeah. It does hurt. I mean, because um, I did care about her. But looking back on it, man, I mean, looking back, I didn't see the red flags. I didn't see. Oh, I know. See, you're, blind, you're completely blind. Yeah, and and, there's, I, I, and this, this new chick that you're with now, she's got more red flags than a Chinese parade. You know how I know? Because she, if she was with a man... And she had a good, she was grounded. Let's put it that way. If she was more grounded and a less emotional level, she would meet you and go, I like you. You're, you're cute. But here's a situation. I'm uh, in, in this deal with my relationship, ex relationship. And what's your deal? And you'd say, well, I, me and my uh, now wife who we have a child, we just decided the other day we're going to get a divorce. A woman is really well grounded would just kind of shake your hand and say, it was pleasure knowing you. But, uh, you get back in touch with me when you when you're when the divorce is signed, sealed, and you give it a few months and so forth. But now, man, she's ready to jump in the sack with you right away. Red flag, uh oh, for both of you. She has yeah, one, you yeah. got them. So just be careful. Yeah. yeah you're oh yeah. No. Playing with fire man. for sure. Oh yeah, I agree with you. Like, you know, like I said, man, just going back, I didn't see the red flags. Uh, I didn't see that we weren't really that compatible. I mean, we really weren't. I mean, just looking back on it now, you know, I'm a fun guy. I like to have fun. I, I mean, I'm a, a, what they call a, a rambling man. You know, I like to just do shit. <laughs> and it's an Almond Brothers caused, tune, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it caused a lot of conflict between me and my, you know, me and my wife. She, uh, you know, she, you know, she was in a depressed state, so she wasn't, you know, cleaning the house or, or working. I mean, by she's not lazy by any means, but if she wasn't doing those two things, you know, she's sitting in a recliner, you know, uh, she never want to go out and do nothing. You know, I'm real avid into sports, and so we go to I go to a lot of football games and and baseball games and things mm-hmm. of that nature. And you know, I've always invited her. Hey, you want to go? No, no. You know, no, I ain't gonna go. I'm just gonna stay here. You know. And so I said, man, we just didn't we didn't connect like, yeah. like I thought we did. Uh, like I said, man, them them fucking butter, butterflies, man, are a motherfucker in the beginning. You know, you it, it bl- completely blinds you to everything. Sure does. New relationship and, energy, we call it. Yeah. yeah and, you know, I, if I could give any man any advice, take it from me. <laughs> Do not get 
in a relationship, get a girl pregnant within six months, then be married within the, mm-hmm. <laughs> within a year. You know, uh, that's where I that's where I fucked up at. Uh, yeah. I seen the roses. You know, I was so caught up in you know how she looked and the whole sexiness of the whole thing, and and man, it, it did it blinded the shit out of me. Yep, yep. But uh, you're older and more mature now. Yeah, and and, and like I say, going back to you know earlier, uh, I kind of found myself with her. You know, what type of person I am, what I want out of life uh, for myself and, and for my kids and maybe, you know, down the road, uh, an, another relationship. You know, I actually know what to look for now. And, and, and you know, I've got your book and podcast and things like that to thank for uh, to kind of kind of get me where I where I want to be. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I said, don't don't rush shit. Take your fucking time. Uh, you <laughs> The biggest mistake I ever made was just rushing into it. Like I said the only good thing that come out of it was my kid. You know, uh, you live and learn. Yep. <laughs> I, God, I know I have. I, I was still, I was still young and dumb when we got together. But now I said, man, I've, I've grew so much uh, as yeah. a person. I mean, no matter like I said, with the, no matter how shitty the relationship is, if both people are honest, they can say, uh, I learned a lot from this. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, I absolutely did. I uh, absolutely did. And I said, reading your books and podcasts also, man, I went on this whole venture of, of doing the, the five languages of love and all these other marriage books. I tried, man. I really did. I tried. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't, just, I didn't give up easy. You know, uh, I, I guess it's for the simple fact is, you know, I don't like to admit failure. So, you know, I did put in work into the relationship uh, and it just didn't, I think, really reading all those books and, 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 you know, trying all the methods and stuff just made me realize that, Hey, you know, you're just not the person for me, you yeah. know, and that's okay. You know, that, that's okay. You know, I, I, I fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up. And let's just, you know, sign some papers and, mm-hmm. and be the best parents that we can be and move on. Is there a part of you that's concerned about her going forward? <sighs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I said, I, I do care about her. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that I don't. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of love lost. I just hope that she can she can get out of that that depressed state. I was going to say with uh, her just with her bipolar, does she have a good network around her family to help? Oh yeah, she's got some really good family, but they they live you know an hour and a half away, uh, and she's not willing to move. I was going to say I, I would predict that if she in fact is going to need some help, does she work? Yeah, yeah, she does work. She works here local. Uh, yeah, don't be surprised if eventually it's I want to move closer to mom and dad and the family just to uh, help Kate take care of some things because it's tough being a single parent. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, man. And, and that's one thing I can say when it comes to being a dad, I I, I go above and beyond. Uh, I may have you know my relationship love, my love and relationships may be fucked up, but but the love I have for my kids is second to none. You know, so you know I'll do so, anything I can to help her out with that. So moving forward, this chapter sounds like it's going to close. Well, actually, before I go down that avenue, let's stop there. Your wife one day calls you out of the blue and says, um, I'm working with a therapist, which I would assume that's kind of not her forte. She's not gone to therapy and talked to somebody about all this before. But she says, I've gone to a therapist and I realized uh, I got a lot of issues and I'm working through it. And I'd like you to come to a session with me and I would like to work on us. No, I couldn't do it simply because she, you've been down that I, road too many times. Well, you haven't because she's not tried that before. She, this is she's not tried it before, but I just I know that she's not my person. Uh, I said I'm, I, I care about her. I, I'll support her if she wants to go to a therapist session. I'll watch the kid for her if she wants to go to work on her. You know, but when it comes down to it, you know, I'm I'm done. You know, um, I won't. I know what I want out of life, and I hate to say it, it's just not, it's just not her. I mean, even looking back in the good times, it still wasn't that good. Uh, we still clash personalities. Uh, you know, I had to shut down a, a a really big part of my personality just for her to be able to deal with me. Uh, hmm. I'm fun, man. I like to aggravate. I, I do. See. I love to aggravate. That's yeah. just my thing, in a, in a joke, you know, joking fun way. You know, and I've had to shut that down for four years because she can't stand it. You know, so I just, I just know that she's just not my person and that's okay. 
But I, but yeah, I said I'll support her if she wants to go. You know, uh, I may. I mean, I mean, heck, I may go with her, you know, one time just to talk about how things went with us, if, if that was something. But as far as, you know, her going to a therapist to with me to try to work on our relationship, you know, sir. Do you ever do see it. do you ever see her going down that road at all of, hey, let's work on us? No, no, it's just not a part of her makeup. It's not part of her. No, and you don't foresee no. another tactic often for women when they see the world crumbling around them is um, we got to stay together for the kiddo. Um. No, I mean, she seems fine with it now. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, like now. Um, you know, I'm trying to be cordial, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm kind of being a dick in a way because I feel like it make it makes it easier, you know, for her. Uh, and I don't know. I, I, you know, so we, we lived together for a little while, for about a week or so without, you know, uh, or with deciding that we were going through a divorce and I kind of just quarantined myself <laughs> to my son's room. And I mean, it was just, I don't know. It's just awkward, you know, awkward as hell. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I ended up, you know, packing my stuff and, and moving out to <laughs> a furnished garage <laughs> 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 just to kind of get some me time, you know, but like I said, I didn't just, you know, I mean, we're money still going in my, you know, money that I make through work still going through our bank account, you know, so, mm-hmm. She's still being taken care of financially, but, but for now, uh, until the divorce is final. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, I said, I just, I just, I said, I'm done, man. And, and I just don't see her seeking help, uh, for, uh, for us anyways. I mean, she may seek help for herself to be you know, a better person, better mom. But as far as us, I believe on both sides that we're, we're done. Like I said, mm-hmm. where I complain about this and this and that, she's complained about, you know, like I said, not spending time with her, not, you know, uh, talking to her, not, you know, communication skills were shit. And like I said, she's at the point where I just, I don't love her anymore. I was going to say, you fell I, out of love is what we're talking about. I don't think I ever that could connection. again. Yeah. Uh, so previous line of questioning when I got detoured here was, that chapter is closed. It sounds like it's about to be closed. And you're how old? I am 31. Oh shit. You got, to, you got a whole life ahead of you. So you're still so. young. Well, that's exciting. It is. It is. It is. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for things to come. Um, just well, my question is what's coming. What, uh, what do you got plans for? Um, <sighs> you, you can, uh, as, as, Horrible as it sounds, when you're not encumbered by a relationship, guys can tend to accomplish quite a bit. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, I'm going to travel when I ain't got the kids. That's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I just go different places, see different things, uh, mm-hmm. which I'm kind of content with the the things that are going on in my life. Like I said, I'm avid into sports, and sports is year-round, so I've constantly got something going on. Uh, I said I'm going to travel. Uh I don't know. I just I'm I'm excited to see what uh what all unfolds. Well as a, all, as a guy opportunities. as a guy who almost has 20 years on you um take this opportunity to lay the groundwork for stuff that's going to help you when you're my age. So don't forget the old career. Don't forget adding on those I don't know what line of work you're in, the certifications and the whatever it may be, but those letters after your name on your business card, you know, whatever it may be, right. um investments outside of stuff out, you know, side gigs outside of your work because those things will pay dividends down the line for sure. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. I've actually been thinking strongly, which it's not set in stone or anything, but I'm thinking about swapping careers. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I really am thinking about swapping careers. Um, I'm just not real well, happy with what I'm doing with where I'm at. I and, caution uh, you. And I wrote a second book called now what, and, uh, it's for men that are, the relationship went bye-bye and so many men go, well, shit, now what am I going to do? And one of the things I put in there is beware of some uh, kind of hyper optimism. It's almost like you get into a manic phase post breakup, post divorce of, it's almost like a way of coping with all the trauma and everything with it. But also there's a genuine, holy shit, I'm kind of free right now. I don't have the kids Wednesday through Saturday. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this, yeah. this and this. And part of that manic state that a lot of men go through is questioning careers and man, I always wanted to fix up old cars. I put that, I put that in the book cause I don't know how many times I've heard that. Uh, I'm thinking about getting in hot rods and fixing up old cars and doing And I'm like, that sounds like fun, but boy, you're not going to make money at that for a while. <laughs> right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little smart when it comes to that. I said, it's nothing set in stone. It would definitely have to be something that was worth, 
you know, it had to be either more or at least equal to what I make right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's not like jumping out on a whim and just be like, good, you know what, good. I'm just going to change my whole life up. Uh, I, I said, I'm excited about things to come. Uh, it is kind of different, though. Like you said, the whole kind of manic stage, it's, it's awkward. Uh, you spend five years, uh, almost six, uh, having a routine and all of a sudden you ain't got a routine and it's like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. I know. You know I spent myself running, you know, see myself running to Walmart or, or <laughs> wherever three or four times a day. I mean, I, you know, when I was married, I never went to Walmart <laughs> once, you know, <laughs> that's just to have shit to oh, do. What's the little things, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Walmart Lowe's. Both, yeah, of, both yeah. of which are literally one minute down the road from me here. Yeah, yeah absolutely, you're right. Absolutely. Same here. Same um, here. You know, I'm king of the to-do list. Um, it keeps me sane. And it also helps um, it, that little feeling of, oh, yeah, pump your fist. I got shit done today. Here, I got one right next to me. We're on video seeing each other for the people on the podcast. And look, there's a to-do list that I have to scratch off right next to me on my desk here. And I'm looking at that. And that keeps my motor going. Because yeah. not, not only are you in danger of Yahoo, what's next? It's almost like you can get to that crescendo, that point where it gets too much. And then and then next thing you know, you find yourself on the couch watching football for the sixth hour that day. Yeah. Um, so beware of that. It's just uh, when life presents you with all, the, with all this freedom, you can go down the toilet pretty quick. I, that, that's, in, that's in part why for a lot of people, and they're not wrong, um, Marriage keeps men in line. It does, man. It does. Like I it said, does. I'm kind of, kind of lost as last year's Easter egg right now. I'm just kind of not, you know, not knowing what to do. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, because for a lot of men, it's um, I'm free. I'm crazy. I'm this. I'm that. I have no direction in life. Here's a wife. Here's a kid. Oh shit! Time to grow up now. Time to get a career. Time to focus on paying the bills. Time to stop chasing skirts and just stay yeah, steady. Or- and steady yeah. and for society and for society overall, we're like, Oh, thank God. Because if it wasn't for marriage and everything, that dude would be a mess and we would all have to pay for it. So, <laughs> you know, prove those people wrong. It's like, no, oh, yeah. I can be a bachelor and I can be successful and I can be good for society overall and be a good dad and be a good friend to my ex wife. Well, there's a novel thought and, um, I can do this right. And I don't, and I'm going to keep coming back to this. Uh, I, don't think you can accomplish that necessarily by jumping into bed with about 97 different women between now and this time next year. No, see, and that's one thing that, you know, I'm not going to do. Uh, yeah. Like I said, this, this, this girl that, you know, I'm, it's just one's fine, you know, when I need it, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, when I need it. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm working on myself, reactivated good. my gym membership. Well, good, get, good. Getting back into that, working on my, just, just going with the flow, man. Here's a, Difficult subject, not saying you need this, but I think anybody could benefit from this. Talking to somebody on a regular basis in the form of therapy or otherwise, or group work, is that something that you're looking into maybe? Um, uh, Not really. I mean, I guess this right here, I guess, kind yeah. of consider, consider well, that a little bit. Well, this is talking to somebody, but... Um, yeah, I've got good I, friends. I think know, on a regular basis, to. just good dude time, but not just drinking beers, talking about, you know, the, 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 uh, the shitty times <laughs> I was going to say the, the, the Titans versus the bills last night or whatever. No, it's like, no deeper than that. Somebody just really sit down and really hash out life stuff with you need yeah, that. And I, I've talked a lot with, uh, my oldest son's mom. So I said, she's kind of, mm. uh, she's this man, she's seen me at my absolute worst, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I confide in her to a lot of things. She's, she's really helped, you know, kind of put things into a little bit more clear, you know, view for me, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I said, man, I was, I was shitty to her. She didn't, I didn't deserve her to be honest. <laughs> and, you know, you do talk pretty glowingly of her. Well, she's a good person. I, I screwed. I mean, but we're. I mean, it, there's nothing there. Okay. I mean, there's I was really, say. I mean, there's there's nothing there. Like she's yeah. got. You know, she's with with another guy. You know, all that good stuff. Like we just always had a good relationship after we weren't in a relationship, which it did take time. I mean, over <laughs> a oh, couple sure. years, we yeah, you know, we finally started. Yeah. You know, the talking and stuff. So I can I do confide in her a lot because she'd be like, you know, that kind of. Kind of sounds like the old you there. You know, she calls me out on my bullshit. You know, she really does. And I, and I need that. I need someone to help me hold myself accountable for, you know, things that I've done. Um, even in, you know, everyday everyday life, my marriage and, and you know, my kids and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. Good, good. Well, 
Hank. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, uh, it's going to get interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm ex- I said I'm excited, man. Well, you're going to have some it, hiccups. It ain't going to be all wine and roses. You're going to have some, oh, Jesus, moments where you're going to be, you know, you're going to want to curl up with a bottle at the end of the night kind of thing. Just, um, you know, talk to dudes like me and others and uh, people who have been there, done that, especially. They're the ones that have a good perspective on all this. Um, don't hit yourself to one woman too fast. Keep busy, keep busy, keep busy. Build those to-do lists, knock them off. And be there for your kid. We haven't talked much about the kid. Your boy, right, son? Yes. How old is he? Four. 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 Well, he's at that age where he knows enough, but he knows things are weird. He knows something's up, but he does not quite sure what the hell's going on. Yeah, now that shit hurts. Yeah, that's the worst thing in the world. Pulls at your heartstrings, man. I went and picked him up last night and took him to Chuck E. Cheese, you know, just have some fun with him. And uh, we come back, you know, and he's just like, "Hey, Dad." He said, "Dad, are you are, are you are you leaving me?" You oh, know, yeah, and it's tough. Man, we had to choke yeah. back the tears. You know, I know. I, I, I often say the toughest day of my entire life, and I've had people die. I've you know, job losses, you name it, was when my ex and I sat down with the kids, and she told them, "Mom's leaving," and their reactions was horrible, awful, awful, awful. And I'll never forget that day. That was very tough. Yeah. And my, yeah. my oldest kid, he's 10, you know, he's been, she's been in his life for, for 10 years or not, sorry, five years <laughs> going on six. And I told him about it and he just give a shit less, you know, um, mm. which said a lot to me yeah. uh, because she really slacked on the, the stepmom part. Um, mm. It was great when we first got together, you know, and then it was just the point. He was he was just like, "Hey, who you gonna get, you know who you gonna date next?" You know? Stay, uh, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that kind of that kind of that kind of sealed the deal for me, you know. Mm. Uh, kind of put the nail in the coffin, the fi- the final one. Yeah, uh, how, how it affected him because you know my kids' happiness is the best, you know, most thing that I care about. Yeah, yeah. And I said sure. he was just like, you know, we're not that close. You know, the only time she ever talked to me was when she had wanted to know if I wanted something to eat or was getting on to me for throwing a ball in the house, mm-hmm. you know? So, so yeah. Well, best of luck to you. You know, best of luck to her. Hope she oh, yeah. does it well, especially considering, you know, all the stuff she has going on and, um, uh, keep in touch. Let me know how it's going. Absolutely. And, uh, this is one of those, you know what to do, what not to do. It's just the most difficult thing in the world is just being able to say, and this comes with, you know, maturity is just to say, uh, you know, those boundaries, the old psychological term, what I'm going to put up with and not put up with and, uh, what I'm going to put boundaries around myself, what I'm going to do and not do, you know, sometimes it's as simple as I'm not going to drink anymore to, uh, I'm not going to call that woman back to, and these are very, very difficult things to do, especially in this traumatic anxious state that you're in yeah. but they they'll pay dividends later trust me from a guy who's 20 years ahead of you almost it's uh, those are the tough decisions but in the end you pat yourself on the back years later saying thank god i did the right thing back then so but you'll learn it uh, with time comes wisdom for sure yes sir absolutely. all right hank thank you for doing this i appreciate it man i appreciate you having me on i really do so best of luck honor. to you Thank you. All right. And uh, we'll see you around. Thank you, sir. All right.